so a lot of things went wrong and I'm very upset but I'm gonna try not to think about it and try to finish this night but um, it might get cut short again um trying to squeeze into my old second wedding dress but i gained 20 pounds so it kind of doesn't fit anymore so here i am about to talk about something that i find extremely uncomfortable to reminisce about but i feel like i owe some of you guys explanations since i told some of you that i was going to post this video way months ago and um i just finally got the courage um to talk about this now because honestly it hurts my heart how angry i get and it's just really it's like an embarrassing situation that every time you remember about it it just makes you feel so ugh. but here i am about to talk about it um so welcome to my wedding was ruined part one that's right i said part one because y'all it's too much to put in one video um it's too much to um think about in one day it's too much to talk about in one day uh yes i'm i'm aware my hair looks um a mess my wedding was a mess so it's fitting so first of all um back then i used to be really into the color black and really into rock music I still am into rock music but just like not like the ones that say blasphemous things. The first thing is many people said they were not going to come. Many important people in my family said they were not going to come to my wedding for the fact that one, I wanted a black wedding dress and two, that I was going to have rock music. So I was dealing with the fact that this was supposed to be my wedding i've always wanted a dark renaissance looking wedding and we you girls know maybe some guys too you you kind of picture what your wedding would be like and your wedding is supposed to be what you want not what others want so i was very hurt by that these were very important people that weren't going to go because of something superficial a black wedding dress that's superficial rock music i was going to put christian rock music but they didn't care they just said that if it was rock it was of the devil well anyways i ended up compromising with them with the people of my dress instead of having an all black with white accents wedding dress i settled for having a white dress with black accents like this one this was supposed to be my my um my only wedding dress but i ended up having to <sighs> next thing is you guys have to know that i was planning on doing everything by myself i had saved up enough money from the previous job that i worked with i was able to pay off the venue flat out i was able to get the decorations flat out i was able to do everything myself but people offered to help me I did not ask for anyone's help, but thankfully uh, some of my family members agreed to cook for the day. So that was really nice of them. And my mom agreed to help me decorate the whole place. It was just gonna be me, her, and my two aunts that were gonna decorate the whole place, the whole venue. So yes, um, as I was saying, I was gonna do everything by myself. As But as um, word of my wedding spread through our family, there was a specific person that offered to help with um, buying the decorations of course i was happy to accept her help so upon discussing uh my vision for this wedding with this person uh i came to see that we did not have the same vision and um they were kind of giving me a lecture on why i shouldn't have it the way i thought i wanted the tables to look really elegant the black tablecloth and then like a skinny white rectangle thing rectangle thing on in the middle of it and then red roses on top the next thing was the background curtain for the ceremony which i also wanted mainly black with two white accents but upon telling this person that they 
were telling me that the person they were going to buy it from would not agree with um, giving me those decorations. So I kept tell it, telling this person, I said, oh, okay, um, I totally understand. It's uh, fine. Thank you for offering to help, but I can get the decorations myself. And um, this person was like, no, no, I want to get them for you. Um, I can see what I, I can do. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, but then the person continued to tell me how uh, my decorations were not in the favor of God, uh, that black was not good. I was getting kind of worried and I kept reassuring her. I said, if you can't get these decorations, it is no problem. I can get them myself and I appreciate your help. I made that so clear, so clear to this person. My husband was with me too. And I was just trying so hard to let this person know that I could do it myself because I, I didn't want anyone to feel obligated to do something that they didn't believe in, you know? This person told me that they would get the decorations for me. So I said, okay, thank you. And we left it at that. Literally, I want to say a couple days before the wedding, I have to look back. I'll insert a clip here. So it really gets me angry when I tell people how I want this wedding to look like because it's my wedding and they tell me no problem. But then they go behind my back and then three days before the wedding, try to change things up on me. But she didn't know that I have Amazon Prime and that I can order stuff next day. Or maybe three days before the wedding, she showed me the decorations. They came in and um, she's like, okay, see, it's gonna look very beautiful. This person pulls out a white tablecloth with a tiny black accent. The level of frustration I had was overwhelming. I gave this person so many chances to back out. And now literally, a la mera hora, they come at me with this thing that was not in my vision, my plan. Oh, it's getting hot here. So yeah, I got very angry. I told this person, please return them. I'm not going to use them. Uh, it's fine. I'm going to go on Amazon and buy my own. And literally that second, I went on Amazon and I got all of them by myself. And thank God that there is Amazon two-day shipping because they arrived right on time a day before the wedding, I want to say. And that led to something else, which will tie into what I'm about to say. So... Another thing that was happening at the same time was my guest list. I wanted a fairly small wedding. The venue that I had um, didn't fit many people and that was fine with me because I only wanted my intimate family and friends to be there. Later on though, I found out I don't really have many friends, but that's, that's later on in the story. Yes, so I told uh, my family members that if they could please not invite their whole congregation because they each went to different churches. I only wanted people who really cared for me and really loved me at my wedding. They told me that it was fine. Okay, however, in the Hispanic wedding tradition, there are many things that um, are ceremonious that are involved in the ceremony like el lazo, um, like las monedas, y luego que más? La Biblia y todos, um, la Biblia, the Bible and all that. And there's different people that have to give you all those things, have to do all those things for you. Um, I don't know if they have that in the other cultures or I, I don't know. I'm an uncultured swine. I had to get people for those. And Georgina said, said that she would be in charge of um, of get, gathering the people that will do that for me. So she was in charge of that. And I kept telling her that I do not want people that I do not know. Fast forward, I want to say a week again, or two weeks before the wedding, I come to find out that she got total strangers that I don't know, I don't have any connection with to do to do the ceremonious things at my wedding. And this hurt me so deeply. Georgina knew 
what I wanted. And she still went behind my back and got people that I didn't know to um, do something so special in my wedding. Georgie, I called Georgina and I said, how could you do this? And she's all like, well, I already did it. I'm not going to call them back and say that they shouldn't do it anymore. And I was like, but I did not want you to get them in the first place. And, it, and she said, you know what? If you make me tell them not to, um, not to do this at your wedding, then I'm not going to go. She hung up on me and she's never hung up on me. This person was so, is so important to me. And it was so disheartening to see her act this way and not respect my wishes. My mom talked to Georgina, but Georgina still was like, I'm, I'm not going to go. And Georgina was also supposed to be part of um, the food in my wedding. So now we weren't sure if we're, we're going to have to find someone else to take their place. But I still had that thing in my heart saying that she was going to come, but um, I just wasn't sure. And I wasn't sure up until the day of the wedding if she was going to come. Anyway, I took it upon myself to gather the people for the ceremonies that I would be happy with. And I got all of my close family members to do the ceremonies. So let's rewind back to, to the uh, person who said they were going to get me the decorations and they did not get the right ones. So another family member that is very important to show up at the wedding. There literally could be no wedding if this person did not show up. Um, let's call this person George. Let's call this person George. George uh, was is very close to the person of the decorations and George got mad that I didn't accept the decorations and said they were not going to come. We talked to George and George said that I should still accept the decorations because she worked hard in getting them. But I kept telling that I told, the, I told the decorations person many times that she did not have to do this for me and that I wanted them this way and that I could get them myself. But George was um, kept saying how I was disrespectful I was being selfish, that I had no respect for my elders. And in my head, I was like, come on, this is my wedding. It's supposed to be how I want it, not how other people want it. I was wanting your wedding to be how you want it, selfish. When I can do everything myself, but other people offer to help. It just did not make sense in my mind. George had also heard about Georgina. And again, George said, you wouldn't even, uh, you wouldn't even take Georgina's help. She did, went through all this trouble to get these people. And again, I had to tell George. It was like I was repeating myself. I was like, I told them so many times what I wanted and that, uh, and they just didn't listen. George was still adamant that I was, I was all these ugly things. They, George called me many ugly things. And that hurt because George is very important. It was as if every single day, something was happening to me, breaking me down each time. So George was said that they are not coming. They are not coming because of the rock music, because I wouldn't accept the decorations, and because I treated Georgina badly. George was also important in the wedding because George was also supposed to contribute to the food. And so it was really difficult to know what was going to happen. And it was so much pressure on me. As you can see, there was a whole bunch of things that were going very wrong. Another thing that I, um, I wanted to do was rehearse with all of my bridesmaids, the pastor, the sound guy, um, people who were going to be part of the show. I wanted to rehearse so that everything could be good. The only problem was no one wanted to rehearse. There were some people who were happy to rehearse, but others did not. And if just a couple people rehearse, but not everyone rehearses, 
it's not gonna look good. So let's um, go to the day of the wedding. The day of the wedding, um, me and my mom and my two aunts, which I am so thankful for, we decorated the whole dang place. We set up the curtain, we put the roses, we set up the tables, we did everything. Oh, my husband too, my husband too, my husband helped, I think. All the while we were struggling to get all this done in time while being able to still get ready, be able to get ready in time. When I invited um, a whole bunch of people that um, I thought were my friends, still my friends. I'm the kind of person who I don't, I can't connect with people if I'm not seeing them all the time. But I invited people who I still thought we had a connection and I wanted them there on my special day. So yeah, just keep that in mind too. So it's the day of, once we're done with the decorations, Georgina comes and I am so happy that Georgina comes. She brings the food, she brings her part of the food. There's still a little bit of tension between us though because we haven't talked since then. I knew that we were too special to each other for her not to come. I was half ready when most of my bridesmaids and the two little boys who were going to um, hold my dress at the end were there. Uh, the only thing we were missing was my uh, maid of honor and the sound guy. You know who you are, maid of honor. If you're watching this, don't take anything I say into offense. This is just how I was feeling the day of, and I still love you. Maid of honor and the sound guy, because they were going, they were coming together. Uh, they weren't going to be able to um, make it the time of the rehearsal that I put down because I put down the rehearsal two hours prior to the wedding. Despite me saying that they were still not able to make it um, in time and I was freaking out because the sound is not too complicated but you have to get used to it. I had specific cues on when I wanted this part of the music to come on and this part of the music to come on. I had very particular things um, that I wanted in when I entered, when my bridesmaids entered, and when we left, I wanted specific things and that's, uh, the sound guy was very important for that. And my maid of honor was gonna be the first one who was going to be walking and it just really sucked that they were not there in time. Me and my mom helped all the um, people who were there practice, good, but then finally um, it was like, time for me to get ready. It was time for me to put my makeup on, put my dress on, do my hair. It was time for me to get ready. So um, I left my mom, God bless her, to uh, kind of kind of like smooth everything over with them while I went to go get ready. God bless my mom. Guys, she was like everywhere. She was on top of everything and which sucks because the pressure got to her. The pressure was too much for her that she got, I, I want to say dehydrated because she was going all over the place. She was on top of everyone. And finally she kind of just like, I want to say collapsed. She had to come into the room where I was getting ready and she was not feeling good. And so we were just there and we were praying that she was all right, but she was not, not in the best state. And that also put a, a strain on me too. And I just didn't know what to do. There was so many things that had to be done still. And uh, my mom was exhausted and my mom turned out fine. Uh, she was fine. And um, I think she went back to the reception to um, to uh, read her part because she was going to have to translate for the pastor um, because some of the people in the reception were not gonna speak Spanish and the pastor spoke Spanish. So she was going to be translating. So she went back to her station and got ready for that. When I was um, getting ready, putting my dress on, I got really emotional all of a sudden. And I'm pretty sure it has to do with the fact that I might have already been pregnant during that time. I'm not too sure, honestly. Don't worry guys, me and my husband were married months before this wedding happened. Uh, we got married by the court, but this was just gonna be like the wedding ceremony. So yeah, so I might have been pregnant by that time and maybe that's what was causing all of these emotions and I just started crying. Like, it was so hard not to cry. I was like, I was just zipping up my dress and then all of a sudden like, 
I was just crying and it was, I had makeup on and it was not good. And there was only minutes to the wedding. I just did not feel put together. And Georgina came in the room and that's where we kind of connected again. And I started crying with her and she started crying with me too. And we, we made up, we made up. George, George, this very important person that the wedding cannot go on without. George uh, was not there and it was 30 minutes after the wedding was supposed to start already. Then an hour passes, George still is not here. I cannot tell you how anxious and sad I felt that George was not there. We're running a little late. Then another hour passes and finally George arrives so we can finally get on with the wedding. And you know, George was probably making the food. Uh, time got away from George, most likely. I forgave George, I forgave George. So now I have to go and keep in mind that I haven't taken a look at the reception. I have been in my room all the time. So now uh, me and the people who need to be with me for my dress and my dad, and my aunts, the bridesmaids are with me and we're walking to the place of the reception. There we are and I see this one important person wearing a white dress and I lose it. I start crying again. I say, this person is wearing a white dress. Isn't that an unspoken rule? The bride should only be wearing white. I start crying again, you guys. It takes a couple minutes for me to get calmed down again. And now it's time for me and my bridesmaids and everyone to um, walk down the aisle. We're in our spot. Someone tells the sound guy to do his thing after no rehearsal. And finally, the first people go and <laughs> there is no music. The music is so, so low. As soon as I, I saw the first group of people go and I, my ears did not hear anything, I was like, what's happening? Is the sound not on? Uh, is the music dead or like, I was worrying, but I could not see anything. I could not communicate to anything. Heart fell in a pit because this was supposed to be my grand entrance and it was not the way I wanted it to be. Once everyone was done, it was finally me and my dad's turn to walk down the aisle. And so I walk down the aisle and I see that there is barely anyone there. Besides my family, who I'm so thankful for, my husband's family, who I am so thankful for too, and my coworkers from the job I used to be in, which I love them so much. I am so glad that they made it. Shout out to my one friend, Lorena. Hey, Lorena, hey, she came through. She was the only friend that came to the ceremony. Lorena, if you're watching this, I am so thankful for you that you took time out of your day to come to my wedding. Thank you so much. There was barely anyone in the seats. And that's how I realized I don't have as much friends as I thought I did. Okay, so I'm walking down the aisle and all of a sudden, okay, I'm gonna leave everything um, that happened during the wedding to um, for part two, because I am uh, mentally exhausted, emotionally exhausted. If you are sensitive about guns, don't watch part two, because there is some stuff about that in part two. So I hope you guys enjoy to hear my misery, but I just want to reiterate that I have forgiven everyone who I felt did me wrong. I have moved past this situation almost completely. All in all, at the end of the day, I did get to marry my best friend in front of everyone who was really important to me. That's all that matters at the end of the day. My husband's back home, so bye. <laughs> Don't look at me! A point.